because this aircraft will enable us to operate almost anywhere in the world uh, and, and, and do so with, within hours. Um, it's got uh, phenomenal performance. It can stay airborne for, uh, for, uh, for over 40 hours. Um, it can fly for thousands of miles or it can sit uh, on a mission for, you know, for almost a day. Um, it can, can, can do everything from pollution monitoring, uh, it can assist in a climate emergency or a humanitarian disaster, or, or it can do some of the more difficult counter-terrorism missions um, in, you know, in some fairly nasty parts of the world. improves on the Reaper in many ways. Firstly, it's a, it's a much more capable aircraft, so it can fly further and, and carry more. Secondly, the systems and the range of different systems we can carry on it are much wider, so it has much more utility for, you know, from everything from sort of monitoring a, an oil slick or a pollution emergency all the way through to uh, some uh, high-end war fighting. And, and then thirdly, the level of automation in it, the sort of the, uh, the ability of it to fly itself, to take off and land itself, to, to ferry itself from one base to the next without, uh, without humans uh, operating it or, or, or actually doing the actual flying is a, you know, is, is a really significant element of it. But in, but in some respects, what, one of the most important things about it is that this aircraft, unlike its predecessors, has been built right from the start with, to the same standards as you would build a passenger airline or, or any aircraft that flew in the UK or around the world. So, so this aircraft can fly in and will be regulated to fly in, in any airspace and have none of the restrictions that we, are, that, that we have to work through by flying you know, Reaper and some of, uh, some of the, the other aircraft that we've got in, uh, in, in service at the moment.